Hello everyone, it's Mariners Fanatic, back with another YouTube video, and today we'll be talking about the five things that need to happen for the Seattle Mariners prior to the trade deadline. These are all decisions that need to be made and that greatly affect the team and its performance. Of course, this is opinion-based. Some of these I really think need to happen, but I'm not so sure if they will, and then others should happen. It's just a matter of when. So the first one on this list is trading, releasing, designating for assignment, doing whatever they can to get rid of Rafael Montero, send him to AAA, I don't care. I've been more patient than others, as his stat cast numbers have been pretty good for most of the season, even, even when he was struggling. But at this point, even the analytics are not really backing him up anymore. Right now, he is 5-3 and three with 7 saves, a 7.02 ERA. Hitters have a 358 average on balls put in play against him. His walk per nine is almost three with a K per nine that's 7.87, which is not too bad. But he's thrown 42 innings, which is a lot more than most of our other relievers. The only thing that still favors him is his FIP is right at four, which could mean that he's getting unlucky or there's other things happening. But the past couple weeks, that has been going up. Earlier on, when his ERA was in the fives, his FIP was down in the low threes, and you were like, okay, he's getting really unlucky. But now, I don't even think it's luck at this point. He's just been really, really bad. And as Mariners fans, it's frustrating to keep seeing him out there, blowing games, giving up runs, keeping us out of games, and it's really just not fun to watch. I don't necessarily think that we should completely get rid of him. I think he just needs to be designated. First time it's sent to AAA or something. But whatever it is, it needs to be figured out soon because he's costing us games. Number two, a decision needs to be made on whether to extend or trade Janiger. Personally, I would prefer to extend him. He's been our best hitter most of the year. Besides maybe J.P. Crawford, Janiger has been a staple in the lineup, and we've been able to see what he can do when he's healthy. He's been pretty good in the outfield. He's had one or two bad games out there. He's made a couple blunders. But overall, he's been pretty solid out in right field. If you're going to trade him, you need to sell high on that value now, as he has gotten hot recently. Or you take the advantage of that and you extend him. Of course, Kyle Lewis will be back at some point this season. But long term, I am more confident in Mitch. Even though he's older, I'm still more confident in him than Kyle Lewis. Kyle Lewis was starting to heat up before he got hurt. But considering Kyle Lewis's injury history, it's not much more promising than Mitch Hanniger's. Kelnick still has things to figure out. Fraley has been sick lately, but he's probably going to be that fourth outfielder no matter who else is out there with him. You'll likely have Julio coming up at the end of the year or next year, probably next year. But of course, Julio is going to be in right, most likely. And at that time, you rotate Mitch and Lewis between center, right, and DH, I'm assuming. But regardless, a decision has to be made on this within the next two weeks with the trade deadline coming up. So one of those two decisions needs to be made, extending him or trading him. Number three on this list, similarly, on whether to keep Seeger or trade him. Personally, I think he's good for the clubhouse. He's still an average hitter, although he's showing declines in that area. And he's been a solid defender at third base all year, and we don't really have another option there. So I would prefer to keep Seeger, as I don't think his value is all that high, and we wouldn't get much in return. But the bottom line is, there isn't much of a replacement in our system right now for third base until next year, maybe. We've got guys like Austin Shenton, who is quickly moving through the ranks, as he was just moved up to double A, where we also have Joe Rizzo and Jake Shiner, who have been average and haven't proven that they're ready yet either. So I think we should keep Seeker for the rest of this year, However, it's a pretty high chance we go with the buyout next season, and so we need to prepare for that happening. If management already knows that they're not going to pick up his option for next year, they need to be planning ahead. And I'm sure they are, but a decision on Seeger needs to be made and needs to be made soon. Realistically, we won't know this decision until the trade deadline comes and goes with Seeger still here or not, but it's still a point to be made and it needs to happen. Number four, and I talked about this a little bit in my trade video from a week or so ago, but we need to trade for three players minimum in my head to make a run at the playoffs. We need one more reliever, possibly two. We need one starter. That's probably the biggest one. And then we need a second baseman. Jerry DePoto's talks about it on the interviews with 710 ESPN Radio. 
They are looking for a second baseman and a starting pitcher. It's just a matter of price point and what we're looking for. Of course, we want someone with years of control. However, that's going to be harder to do and cost more in prospects and money. Reading reports today, it looks like Jose Barrios is possibly off the table for the Twins, and it is likely the same case in regards to Luis Castillo at the Reds, as the Reds are making a playoff push in their division as well. Kyle Gibson is going to have a lot of competition as far as the trade market with the Rangers, which is going to make things difficult, but a deal needs to be made to get a starter, seeing as how Sheffield is out, not performing well prior to being injured, and at this point we only have four true starters in the rotation until we get Justin Dunn back, at which point, with Dunn coming back, we could still move back to the six-man rotation, or move Dunn to the bullpen. Either way, a starter needs to be acquired. As I've said before, we need to trade for a reliever, preferably a left-handed reliever, as I think our system is weak in that regard in the minors, as well as on the big league club. So we definitely need to be looking there. And then, of course, the second base market. The free agent market for second base is not particularly strong next year. I would love an Adam Frazier trade, but he's going to be hotly sought after by a lot of different teams. It just kind of depends on what we'll be able to swing without taking away too much from the talent depth in the system. As Dylan Moore is not cutting it anymore, Shedlong has been okay at times. But overall, it is a big need if we want to make this next step in this rebuild and push for the playoffs. Finally, the last thing on the agenda is extending Jerry DePoto and Scott Service. Some of you may agree with me on the first part, but not the second part. But these two guys have been together the whole time they've been here. And without one, you won't see the other. I think Jerry DePoto deserves an extension of at least one most likely two seasons to truly see how this rebuild finishes out. I believe he's earned that and deserves it. Scott Service has actually done a fairly good job of running this ball club this year, minus some bullpen stuff that still frustrates a lot of us at times. But overall, I think he has done a fairly decent job of managing this club, and that needs to be recognized as well. We also need to see if he can manage this team outside of the rebuild when we get better players in the free agent market this next offseason. If he is able to do that, then we can prove that, okay, yes, Scott is a good manager. But the last few years, we haven't really been able to tell because of the rebuild and the aging money pit group prior to that. been hard to nail down exactly how Scott is as a manager and whether he is bringing success or failure to the team. Both Jerry DePoto and Scott Service need to be extended at least through next year, possibly even 2023 as well. So there you have it. Those are the five decisions that need to be made prior to the trade deadline. A little less than two weeks for all these decisions need to happen. I'm not sure if all of them will happen, but they should, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I'll probably be coming out with one or two more videos prior to the trade deadline and just after it analyzing anything that happens during the deadline for us. With that said, I'll see you guys next time. Mariners Fanatic, out.